The Cowboys Ravens game had another wrinkle that we were fascinated by. Whoa. I know I was. Des Bryant cut by the Cowboys abruptly in April of 2018 after all the money had been spent in free agency, which made it harder for him to find a new home. He eventually did with the Saints, tore an Achilles tendon in his first practice, sat out all of 2019, landed on the Ravens practice squad. And I still believe that the flirtation with Des Bryant was an effort to placate guys in the locker room that wanted Antonio Brown, but Des worked hard. He worked out. He got to the active roster being called up. Then he made it to the active roster permanently, at least as permanent as it ever is in the NFL, and anticipating he was, we were, everyone was. Des Bryant on the field against the team that drafted him 10 years ago, and he was on the field getting ready for the game when he found out he won't be playing in the game because of a positive COVID-19 test. And here's what happened. And this is one of the strange, I don't want to say inequities of the process, but it kind of is. The closer you are to one of the five bioreference laboratories, the quicker you get your results for the daily PCR testing. And the Ravens, are close to a laboratory. One of the five labs is in Maryland. Mm. So the sooner that the samples physically arrive at the lab, the sooner they get tested, the sooner you get the results. And all year long, the Ravens have been routinely getting their results in that 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern time window every day. I think they get tested a little bit later for a a night game. Right. Right. Game day, night game, you get tested a little bit later, but the results came in right around 7 Eastern for Des Bryant. The off-site PCR test by Bioreference Laboratories showed inconclusive. So test him again. And the NFL has shifted, and this has been fairly quiet in large part because most of the fans don't care. But what's happened is they've gone from the on-site point of care test, the low accuracy test that looks for the antigens, not the actual virus. They've moved from that to a system created by Mesa, which is essentially, not essentially, it is an on-site PCR test that looks for the actual virus. And it's pretty accurate. So they gave Des Bryant the on-site Mesa PCR test, and it was positive, and that was that. He's yanked from the game. This is the closest the NFL has come to what happened in the World Series game where the Dodgers player got yanked during the game. Right. And the NFL has said they would do it during the game. This is before the game. Just before the game, they find out Des Bryant's positive. He's off the field. He's not happy. He had a tweet storm last night, which at times was a little bit emotional, as it would be. I can't blame him. Cowboys, he gets pulled off the field. I just said the same thing. I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm never playing again. And. And, and look, I, I think that he'll eventually realize that the smart move is to keep playing. But he was unhappy, and I can understand why he was unhappy, because you're locked in. You're ready to go. As far as you know, you're playing football. You're not even aware that something like this can happen, and it happens, and it happens to you in what you think is the biggest game of the year. So he ultimately said, yes, he's coming back. He's being smart. So he just had to work out that that anger, initial emotion frustration yeah i don't blame him no i mean gosh man the guy's been through everything i mean been through everything first off he hasn't had like the easiest life in the world yeah he played in the nfl did all did some great things we know that has the injury you know dallas lets him go okay it's close to coming back with the new orleans saints has in the in- another injury that hurts him there you know, and then he's sitting out of football, waiting for his chance. He finally gets his chance. He's just getting back into, like, kind of playing shape, playing form. And, oh, man, the team that drafted me and let me go in the city that I still live in, they're coming to town, the Dallas Cowboys, and it's a big game for us, and they stink, and maybe I have a chance to go off and, you know, shove it where the sun don't shine for, as far as that, they're concerned. I mean, that that's just a heartbreaker. And then to be teased, it's one thing to, like, get hurt during the week or, you know, pull a hammy on a Friday, but you're like, get it's game day now. And you're all, you're taught thinking about his game. And now you're going to go on the field and warm up like as a player. I mean, that, that you're, you're in a total different mindset. You're foaming at the mouth. You can't wait. And I can't even imagine how much he couldn't wait for, for this type of scenario. 
So uh, I feel for him, and I understand that onslaught of tweets and everything like that. But he did drink some wine, and he coped, and he's going to be back. So I'm happy about that. All we have from Des are the tweets. We've got some sound from both John Harbaugh, the coach of the Ravens, and Des Bryant's teammate Derek Wolf on what happened with Des. Here they are. Well, it's a big challenge. You know, I mean, the timing of this thing is it's a crazy kind of a deal, but we'd already turned in our inactives, and uh, and then we were informed. Eric came down and told me that um, Des had a um, an inconclusive test, and they were retesting uh, one of the one of the quick tests they have, the Mesa test. And we had to wait on that. And uh, in the meantime, the league told us we would not be allowed to bring a different player up if he if he tested positive. But if he tested positive, that he wasn't going to be allowed to play. My understanding that they did all the contact tracing, all the procedures were followed as far as any other player is concerned. But then they came back out while we were on the field in pregame warmups and said that uh, he had tested positive and so he would not be allowed to play. And that's where we were at. So we played with a man short on that one. We didn't find out until, like, I was in full pads taped up, eye black on, ready to go, you know, and then when they came in the locker room, like, hey, Des can't go, and then we were like, well, no, the NFL made us play a guy short, the league made us play a guy short, so they wouldn't let us bring another guy up, which is, you know, to me, I think we maybe need to look at that rule and maybe change it, but that's the rule, so we got to play by the rules, but, you know, with COVID, I think we have to have some leeway to, to change that, you know. Yeah, both guys are referring to the rule this year that allows teams to bring up to 16 players from the practice squad to the active roster on game day. But after the inactives are turned in 90 minutes before kickoff, that's it. The rosters are locked. But like, maybe come there on. does need to be. There's there no does wiggle need to be room something for where, this? Yeah. yeah, well, may, maybe there should be because... You know, we, we knew because the NFL said in the aftermath of that Dodgers game, they would pull a guy off a of field during a game if they found out he tested positive. We hadn't thought about, and maybe they hadn't thought about the possibility of getting a positive during that window from 90 minutes before kickoff and kickoff where you could tell a replacement from the practice squad, get in your uniform get ready you're playing right so that is something that i think they should consider even if it is just for the final four weeks of the regular season because that does eliminate some of the unfairness now there's a lot of skepticism and des is one of the ones who raised this question himself how is it that you can play the game if i've tested positive because what this means is he showed up for work shedding virus he was in the locker room shedding virus he was out on the field before the game shedding virus and the nfl and initially i saw some reports citing sources 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 i asked the nfl you know can you explain to me what happened they gave me a statement on the record here's what happened we did the contact tracing the system worked the protocols worked we talked to the right people we checked the contact tracing device and you know maybe it's a testament to the ravens learning the hard way yeah. from their outbreak to keep a part in the locker room. Right. And it helps when it's a home game. We've talked in the past about how the visiting team locker room can be a little bit cramped. And you gave us a fairly graphic example of someone's butt in your face. Yes. But the home team locker room, you can, you can spread out. And it sounds like they were smart about it. The one glitch in all this though, Chris, and there was a photo posted by Ryan Mink, I believe his name is, who works for the Ravens digital operation of Des Bryant out on the field hugging people before the game and you know the nfl's reaction to this is it's still not enough and obviously that tweet was deleted once it became clear that there were questions about des bryant possibly spreading virus before the game but remember that quick interaction is not a concern it has to be a sustained contact the viral load that gets passed from one person to the next. this isn't just that one and I don't understand it. I'm not an epidemiologist. I, know, I, it's I defer to those who do. Yeah. But it, it isn't just that one microscopic molecule that's floating through the air. It takes enough that it gets into your body, it takes root, and then the process of multiplication begins. And that's one of the things they've learned in the eight months we've been dealing with this. So the NFL's position is, yeah, it's no big deal if he was hugging people out on the field before the game. The reality is you've got to be in closer contact for a sustained period of time to be at risk of catching it. Now, we'll see. We'll see. We'll test that theory. We'll find out if anyone from the Cowboys that he may have been hugging last night pops with a negative or or positive, or if any of the the Ravens teammates do, and they end up with a new outbreak. That would be awful if that happened. But, uh, you know, it's it's not 
it's not quite as clear or quite as easy because you just don't know. You have to wait and see. But the NFL is confident that the protocols worked and they, they got to where they needed to be, even though no one else was shut down and the game was allowed to proceed. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it does seem like it's a loophole a little bit. I mean, certainly. But well, we have enough evidence of guys being on the field with, that are positive. And other guys on the football field don't get it. I mean, we, we do have that. So that doesn't mean, oh, yeah, just because he hugged a guy. I mean, I still that, – that picture of Stephon Gilmore face-to-face – uh, face to face with Patrick Mahomes right after that game will always stand up in my mind to just like, okay, outside. Yep. And then, then all the things you're talking about that, you know, sustained transmission and everything there too. The other thing that I think probably, you know, saved the Baltimore Ravens and saved the game in general too, is, you know, you look at the pregame pictures and everything. It looks like Des was there very early. Like he's one of the only players on the field in almost every pregame shot I saw. So I bet you he was one of the first people in the locker room. I bet you there wasn't a lot of guys there yet, too. I bet you that saved them a little as far as the contact tracing and him not around people because most times NFL football game, you got an 8 o'clock game. I would say everybody's in the locker room by around 6 o'clock, right? Somewhere everybody's in there. But a lot of the – love football guys, want to be there, do everything like that, they they might get there at 4.30, 5 o'clock, maybe even earlier than that. And it looked like he was there significantly early, and maybe that helped out the situation as far as people being around him. Des was probably there as early as he could possibly right? be because he had a lot of passion. He wanted yeah, to play the day. Cowboys. He wanted the Cowboys to see, here I am, I'm still around. Let's hear quickly from Lamar Jackson on Des being pulled and uh, and how the team reacted to that development when we found out when we was on the field you know um, warming up and we only had like four receivers out there you know we was looking around for them then they told us it was like we just gonna have to put a game for him you know we got to win that game for him because we know how much it meant to him you know he's been talking about it uh, for a minute now since he's been here so that's just it's i don't know i don't like like you know what happened but it, it is what it is we got the victory for him um i'm feeling for him though because i know he's you know he did the game he wanted to be in he still provided the emotional lift, and that's what I was intrigued by, how much of a, of a boost he would give the Ravens. Not that they needed a lot of incentive to avoid falling to 6-6, six and six, yeah. but it was a little extra. It was a little something, and that was a disappointment. It was so weird how it was all unfolding because we find out Dez isn't going to play, and then there was a feature on the Fox pregame show about Dez after we found out he wasn't going to play. And I look, I can't fault people. You've got everything locked and loaded. You're ready to go play the show. But uh, it just it just was a strange half hour to 45 minutes to get the game started. And that may be one of the reasons why the Ravens seemed a little off early it could on. Be. It's You're just right. a weird curveball right. that gets thrown at your head right before the game starts. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could be exactly right about that. Yeah, you get that type of news throughout the team. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody takes a step back. Oh, man, that I feel bad for Dez. I can't believe that. You know, who knows? Yeah, you're also thinking, damn, was I around him? What else was he around today? Uh, could all be a part of it. But either way, at least Baltimore got back, back on the right track. And they've, they've, you know, weathered this storm of COVID-19 and all the issues they've had to deal with, one and one here. Now they're going to have somewhat of a normal week going forward. And like you have said many a times, I think they're getting close to being a healthier football team that they were, you know, five, six, five, six weeks ago. And I, they, they could go on a run here and be dangerous. And it's just going to be interesting to see if they could pull this off and get hot again and go into the playoffs and scare some teams in the AFC. The best news of all, 13 weeks completed. Every game that was scheduled has been played. Yes, it has taken some shifting to get them all played. But 13 weeks, 13 weeks of games played. The NFL has to be feeling pretty good about that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.